Hey, how's it going, you guys? Spyderco64, um, back again, and I have been gone for a little while. Okay, well, yes, I have been had. I have had a uh, big absence on here for quite a while now. And uh, if you're kind of wondering, or if any of you still watch my videos, you might want to kind of know what's just been going on and. Simply, it's just uh, college shit, you know. Um, I've been, you know, carrying that big response. I've been having that big responsibility and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, just to trying to get through uh, this term, trying to pass my classes. It's pretty hard, but I'll get through it. Well, and any of you who are in your first year of college, maybe like last year, you took a gap year. But then this year... Now you're going to college for the first time. And if you're like me, I went to high school and then I went to college. Should have taken a gap year. I I really should have taken a gap year just so I can go to work and all that sort of stuff. But then again, if I did that, I wouldn't have time to make videos. But I know for sure I can still make these review videos. So what am I going to be talking? Well, okay, you know what? You already know what I'm going to discuss about, and that is Marvel's She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. So, yeah, the show ended about, you know, um, a few weeks ago at this point, and a lot of people were probably going to be asking, well, me, uh, Spidey, what did you think of the show? And to that I say, the show was not... It was not made for me. And why do I say that? Because quite frankly, honestly, you know, I probably could talk about how maybe bad some of the writing is. And my, some of the writing is. Maybe the, some of the visual effects. And maybe how maybe there weren't, how maybe some scenes could, or maybe some ideas just didn't work. You know, all that sort of stuff. But I'm just not here to talk about that because... Quite frankly, there are already way too many people that are really just... Now, here's the thing. And that is uh, criticizing a show like... Like, it's okay to criticize She-Hulk, in my opinion. You know, and art is, suggest is suggestive. Now, the thing is, for me, is that She-Hulk doesn't really feel like a piece of art. Kind of just feels like, I don't know, just a bunch of ideas all scrambled together... Just, I don't know, like a bunch of ideas that didn't really work for me. Now, here's the thing, is that I don't hate the She-Hulk character either. Actually, as a matter of fact, she's kind of up there with one of, my, one of my favorite, you know, Marvel characters. And honestly, this is a good adaptation. So, hey, even though I can, I like a character from the comics, doesn't automatically mean I'm going to like their show. Like, for example, which I feel like, like, I'm, I love Moon Knight. Comic book Moon Knight. But I'm not really, but I don't know, just some stuff about MCU Moon Knight doesn't really do it for me. I guess I could say I like Stephen Grant, but I kind of wish maybe they can introduce some of the dark elements of Moon Knight, like, like with Mark Spector, and I wish Jake Lockley was more prevalent in the show, and maybe he is going to be in the second season, but we, we're just not too sure. We don't know if this is going to be an ongoing series. We don't know if it's going, you know, to have a second season. And we are going to see, and I think we are going to see She-Hulk later down the line. It's just whether or not people will want to see another She-Hulk series and all that sort of stuff. Now, another thing I will also give credit to this show is also because uh, it actually feels like a TV show. It doesn't feel like a movie that, um, you know, maybe should have been a special presentation, which... I really would like to see, and I'm pretty sure there's some cuts out there, fan-made cuts, of people being taking some of the Disney Plus shows that should maybe have been in movies. Like, for example, which Falcon or Soldier probably should have been a movie. You know, and uh, other shows like uh, maybe Loki. I wouldn't really say Loki, but other shows like, like um, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. Could could have all been Disney Plus, could have all been special Disney Plus movies, 
or there could have been movies that go out to the theaters. Like, honestly, I don't understand who makes the decisions at Marvel Studios or I don't, I mean, of course, Kevin Feige, of course, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, of course, Kevin Feige approves everything, but just really like, it's like, does every freaking character in the Marvel lineup need to have a movie? Like, let's be kind of honest here. The Eternals did not need a movie. Could have been a Disney Plus show. You know, did Shang-Chi need to be a movie? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I'm not too crazy about Shang-Chi and all that sort of stuff. Or Shang-Chi, excuse me. Like, you know, that's kind of something. And it's a problem with Phase 4. And definitely it's that a lot of projects has just been coming out way too much. And honestly, it should be slow. It should slow down a little bit. You know, and all that sort of stuff. Now, of course, you know, um, and all that sort of stuff. That's just been a big problem with Marvel lately. Now, to give She-Hulk um, some credits here, I'll just kind of go through all of them. Basically, you know, like, now, not all the episodes landed for me. Like, the first episode was kind of okay. I don't really remember what happened in the second or the third or, no, in the third one or in the fourth one, Wong shows up or... No, maybe the third one was about Abomination, which it was cool to see him again, though not what we all wanted. But then again, the guy's been in prison for 10 years, so yeah, maybe he maybe he did change or something like that. And also, you know, another thing, um, don't remember the... Yeah, I think the fifth and the sixth episodes maybe were the worst ones just because there was so much filler or... You know, and all, you can kind of say all these episodes were filler, but well, none of them really added. They weren't interesting, in my opinion, and all that sort of stuff. And the reason why I like the seventh and the eighth and the ninth episode, well, the ninth episode is debatable for me. I'm still debating it. But basically, though, the seventh episode where she's, where she's um, having a therapy session, that was pretty wholesome, I think, in my opinion. Pretty wholesome. Love that a lot. Episode 8, of course, introduced or reintroduced Matt Murdock, Daredevil. And in my opinion, they did a good job with uh, Daredevil. Yeah. You probably were, were going to think I was going to hit on this show because they ruined Daredevil. And no, they did not. They added actually a lot to Daredevil. Now, I mainly am talking about the Daredevil that we... I've seen um, in the Netflix series. And I do, and I think it is confirmed at this point that yes, that is the exact same Daredevil, like this, the exact same character. That was in um, season that, uh, that had his first, that had three seasons and he was in the Defenders. Like, I'm glad that he is the same, it's the same character and it's the same, you know, person. Because let's be honest here. This is a natural character progression from Matt Murdock. In the third episode, in the third season of Daredevil, he was at his lowest point. You know, his lowest damn point. You know, like basically, you know, he's he was losing. You know, his uh, he was losing faith, and he was losing um, faith in his religion. Like the dude was literally framed. Um, his image was framed, you know, and like, damn it. He also then found out that his mother was alive the whole time, but he was abandoned by her, you know, abandoned by her. And also that exact same church was also abandoned by him as well. And we see by, by the end of Daredevil season three, he locks up Kingpin well, then Kingpin probably got out, and we don't know what happened during that time gap. Probably had to do something with the snap, and hell, probably, maybe Matt Murdock was one of those victims. We don't really know what happened, but if I can predict anything, probably what happened, most likely, is that Matt Murdock, you know, Foggy and Karen all opened up that new law form, you know, in the new Napkin episode, the final episode of the Daredevil series, they probably have their own mini law form. And, you know, and Daredevil's probably having a better life. Who knows what, and, you know, and he's happier now. 
And you know how he had to also change his costume because, well, first of all, if I can also say, and it's most likely because literally Bullseye was going around dressing up as Daredevil or Point Dexter or whatever the hell Bullseye is. His identity changes every freaking um, adaptation um, and all that sort of stuff. But basically the whole point I'm trying to get across is that it's a natural progression for Daredevil's character to not be so edgy. If you're all expecting to be edgy, you are watching the wrong goddamn show. I don't know, it'd be like if, I don't know, um, good lord, have, God kind of forbid, um, uh, in the next Batman, in the new Batman movie, presumably the next one with Robert Pattinson, he comes out and he's a bit of a more hopeful, he's a bit like, kind of like Superman a little bit, and then people are gonna be like, he's not edgy, he's not emo enough, they ruined Batman. That's just what it seems like to me. Like, you're all, like, it's just laughable just to see people just posting or just to see bigger YouTubers with that stupid damn title of MCU ruined Daredevil and all that sort of stuff. No, they did not ruin Daredevil. It's a natural progression of, it's a natural character progression. We're all not, like, hey, you know, I got out of my, a little bit out of my sort of emo and kind of, kind of dark phase out of high school. And yeah, even though I still have some depression, and the reason why this video is out even now is because, well, first of all, it's solely because I wasn't in my right mindset. I was feeling a lot of the fatigue of college. And today, I decided that it was going to be a new, it was, it, it was a new start. I was going to start different. I'm going to do different. That's really kind of how, why this show, that why, you know, um, you know, really why this, um, whole entire, um, you know, um, episode or new video is coming out late. And of course I didn't review the Andor episode because once again, I was also, and because once again, I wasn't in the right mindset. That was because I was, I think I was busy, um, around some of those days. I don't know. But basically, the whole point I'm trying to get across here, and I haven't really talked about the ninth episode, but I'll just kind of say this. It was definitely unique. Not going to say it was good. Not going to say it's bad. It was, certainly was different. So just, uh, that's pretty much all I really do have to say about She-Hulk. Do I think it's a good show? Uh, I'm not really too sure if it is. It wasn't a show made for me. It's not not a typical superhero show it's not you know where uh not groundbreaking you know one thing i will give this to like doctor strange and black panther because those two movies are most likely are the best are the are the better mcu projects that came out this year at least with doctor strange and, and the multiverse of madness at least that really reason why i like that movie a lot is just because i love all the multiverse stuff in it I like seeing the character. I like seeing Professor X. You know, um, not really so much um, uh, Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel, or Captain Carter. I love seeing John Krasinski as Mister Fantastic, and I like seeing, um, you know, how even to an to an extent, uh, you know, uh, Black Bolt. You know, the same guy that played him in the Human Show, and he, he was given a second chance. You know, so that's the reason why I really like Doctor Strange was all the multiverse stuff and all the crazy ass visuals. You know, that was a pretty damn cool superhero show. And another reason why I liked um, another show, uh, why I also would kind of also say Black Panther 2. And of course, it's not out yet. But that movie really does look like it's going to be a very big emotional ride. And honestly, that is why I love movies and shows. Ones that are personal to you. Ones that really, you know, are relatable. Ones that, you know, really give you hope. And just give you. Like, it just tells you things are okay. And that's the big reason why I love, you know, Marvel and superheroes as a whole. And, you know, the thing also, too, is that also this weekend I'm going to watch Black Adam. And I might maybe post a review on it because the DC the DC boys are kind of making a comeback. If you know, you know. You know, you know. But anyways, uh, 
guys, just like I said, She-Hulk just is not that show for me. And honestly, I'm living, I can live with it. Now, of course, what I love, now talking about the Hulk itself, I'm talking about Bruce Banner, all that sort of stuff. Would I like to see a new movie with him? And do I think that they're setting up a new Hulk movie? I want to see a new Hulk movie down the line. Though if they're going to do it, I'd rather it be really like um, a deep sort of character study of Bruce Banner and Hulk. Maybe we can return to the Savage Hulk. You know? Who really knows what they're going to do? But once it does, you'll be back here and maybe you'll watch my little move, my little stupid video on it on my iPhone and all that sort of stuff. All right, guys. I'm going to uh, cut it here. Uh, tell me what all thought of She-Hulk. Hopefully all of you are doing okay. And, uh, you know, please all be safe out there. And uh, with that being said, I will see all of you in the next video. I don't know what's going to be. Maybe Andor. Maybe Tales of the Jedi. But we'll tell you. But anyways, thank you all for watching and uh, stay tuned.